I was not going to watch this movie and it wasn't like a particularly thoughtful decision. It was just, I'm super busy. I don't really have time. I've heard a lot of interesting things about it, but also I'm kind of conflicted about what I think. And based on what I was watching on TikTok, it was seemed like this was some sort of propaganda piece by the alt-right. And then one of my buddies said, hey, I'm going to this uh, film. You want to come with me? So I went with my fiance and a couple of our friends and we went there. Let me explain a little bit. The movie is about child trafficking. The movie's about child trafficking. If you haven't seen this movie, Sound of Freedom, you need to go watch it because it is going to help you better understand what's going on out there and the importance of not keeping your eyes closed to the injustice that is happening in our world even today. One of the kind of more shocking statistics in the film was that there are more active slaves today than there are than there were in any other point in history and a lot of those obviously are going to be children and so the the movie kind of hones in on the story of tim ballard somebody who had uh, worked for the government um, tracking down these kind of pedophiles in order to reunite one girl to her father he ends up actually leaving uh, the, the, his agency job going to work solo for this big operation where they're gonna you know catch all these folks and it was an amazing movie and it really got me thinking why are people mostly progressives so against this movie why are they so against this movie and it just brought me back to the normalization of what people call minor attracted persons or maps and you don't, and that, that's not just a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that there is the push of the normalization of men boy relationships and then also the denial of the, you know, accuracy of this movie. I don't think those things are disconnected. Ultimately, what we need to understand is this when you reject God's moral law, his objective standard of what is right and what is wrong, then you are left to your own devices. You are left to your own opinions. You're left to the zeitgeist of the culture. You're left to, the desires of man. And what we've seen in our culture is a shift from what has been considered to be normal, a man and a woman getting married to a man and a man, and you know, all of a sudden the acceptance of all sorts of things that we would have been we would have considered sexually perverse previously, but now our culture has grown to accept it. Why is that? Well, because we've rejected God's law. We've objected, we've rejected God as the ultimate law giver. And what this issue, why this issue is so important is because we're created in the image of God, that each person is created in the image of God and they are deserving of dignity and they are worthy of respect. And what is going on out there is a complete degradation of that image of God. And that's why it broke my heart. It broke my heart to see not only what's going on in that movie, what's going on in other countries, but what's going on in, in my country as well. I read this book, a powerful book by a man named Paul Boga. He's a pro prolific author in my city here of Winnipeg. And he wrote a book about um, child trafficking and, and trafficking in, um, in Canada in general. And just how, how, how all of our society is kind of uh, pushing this away and not, not wanting to think about it, but it's going on right in front of us. And I think what the movie did well, just to give a little bit of commentary on the movie itself, is is it showed that goodness can win. It showed that goodness ultimately does win and that God does win. You see this man, he's watching through, at least when he was with his agency job, he's watching through hours and hour, hours of CP and just how you can see it in his eyes, how, 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 how that's raging, uh, like this war on his soul, seeing these image bearers taken advantage of. You, you just can't imagine what that's like. You can't imagine the kind of therapy and, and healing that needs to happen after that. I don't know how anybody could do that, honestly. But then you find that regardless of the trauma that he's experienced in his life, that, that he still goes out and, and, and searches for this one, this one girl. And it reminds me, honestly, and, uh, you know, it reminds me of the story of God. It reminds me of the shepherd losing the one sheep and going after to find him, to find the lost sheep in order to bring it back to his sheepfold. And that's a beautiful picture of the gospel. It's a self-sacrificial picture of seeing someone who has, who has gone astray and bringing them back home, bringing them back in. And in this case, it's not of their own volition. They're being taken 
from these homes. And it is so, so destructive. It's so sad to see. And I just cannot believe, I cannot believe, it makes me angry um, that people would try to dismiss this as a reality of calling it too far-fetched, of of calling it propaganda, of calling it, you know, right-wing extremism. Like, it, it just makes no sense to me. But then you begin to think a little bit more about it, and it makes perfect sense. Why would people in general that want to indulge in sexual perversion call out sexual perversion? That doesn't make any sense. Why would they call out their own? Why would the big wigs of Hollywood and uh, in general, you know, promote a film that hits to the core of the debauchery of our society? There's a powerful moment in the film. One of my favorite moments is when he tries to befriend um, this this pedophile in order to uh, kind of get information from him. And, and, and so he's in this diner with him. This man had basically just kind of offered up this child for him and say, hey, you know, this is he's all yours for the weekend. And Tim Ballard, who's still who was still kind of in character, he's trying to, you know, pretend that he's one of them uh, in order to befriend him. He, he kind of whispers, he's like, better to have a millstone tied around your neck and to be cast into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. And the other man doesn't know what he's saying, really. But in that moment, he says, you're under arrest. And I just think even that arrest is nowhere near compared to the judgment that God has for those that would lead one of these little children to stumble. And that's why I have no problem calling down judgment on them. I, I pray for their repentance, but I pray that God would stop them even in this moment from doing what they're doing. If you haven't watched this movie yet, I recommend it. It's not too graphic. Even if you're a little bit sensitive to these type of things, I, I don't think it's too graphic. They don't really show anything. And it just ultimately gets across the point that this is something that is happening. And we as Christians specifically have not only the light of the gospel to bring into this situation, have an objective worldview, an objective truth, God's moral standard that, that we can call things objectively evil, but we also have a part to play. And so beginning to watch this film, beginning to maybe support an organization that you see is doing important work in this fight, that's I think where we begin. Before I jump off for today, I want to offer you guys something. If you're struggling with lust online and you want accountability, I have a 30 days free sign up for you to get Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes is an accountability software that will help you if you're struggling with lust online. I know a lot of you are in this place. Maybe you've been in a place of isolation. Today is the day. 30 days free. Click the link in my description. Sign up today and it will help you. It helps men and women break free from this stuff today is the day. Until next time, God bless.